Okay, these equations are called literal e equations, and you just have the task of solving for whatever variable. Notice there's everything's a letter, and you have to isolate the variable that it tells you to. So in this case, we just need to get that A by itself. So what I did here is write it just a little bit more obviously by using a different color. And notice, A is almost by itself. It just has a dividing C. So the only thing that we've got to do is multiply both sides by C. And when we do that, ta-da! A is equal to D, B, C, all divided by R. So that was a pretty easy one. Let's look at the next one. So this time we need to get X by itself. Well, this one looks pretty easy. Again, we need to get this by itself. So it looks like all we're going to do is add the M. When you add the M to this side, you do not add the M to the fraction. You add the M to the outside of the fraction. And sometimes professors will want these to have the same denominator. This, by the way, this is the correct answer. But another way to write that correct answer is that you would multiply top and bottom by y. And it could be rewritten like this. In the numerator, n plus p plus my all divided by y is equal to x. But both of these... scenarios are correct, both this one and that one. And I think, nope, we've got a couple others to do. Okay, so for one that looks like this, we need to get A by itself. So I think all I did was rewrite that to make it more clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this fraction by itself by subtracting the G divided by H. Yep, and that's all I did was I subtracted the G divided by H. But before, we can't just flip everything right now, but what we can do is if we multiply this top and bottom by H and this top and bottom by R, it will now be a fraction with the same denominator. Then we'll have a frac, um, excuse me, a fraction equal to a fraction then you can flip both sides. So when I simplify that and multiply this side top and bottom by H. So that gave me DBH. And I multiplied here top and bottom by R. So that gave, gives me subtract, subtract, excuse me, GR. And now they share the same denominator as R times H or H times R. Okay, now we have a fraction equal to a fraction. So you could multiply by the diagonal. You could multiply this, uh, both things by H, and then multiply both sides by RH. But one way to think about it, that is if you flip both sides, you're doing the same, you, you get the same result without showing the algebra, but the algebra that I just showed where you multiply both sides by A and then multiply both sides by RH, or if you wanted to think about it, just multiply both sides by ARH, the RH and the RH cancel, um, the A and the A cancel, but that can get a little bit complex. So if you flip both sides, now look at what, what we have. We have the A by itself, so I'm just going to multiply both sides by C. Oh, sorry, I was thinking that we had more to do over here. Sorry, I paused for a second. This is a, a different problem. So notice the, an the answer will end up being A is equal, and I'm R times H times C. I'm just going to put a little bit closer. So this right here is the final answer for that one. 
Okay, sorry that I paused there for a second. All right, so now we have another equation over here, and we now need to get the x by itself. So I'm going to subtract both sides, the c divided by I was so accustomed to getting a by itself that I went ahead and subtracted. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this. Okay, I went ahead and restarted this. So now I solving for x, I'm going to get these two things, uh, the g divided by x by itself, just like this. And so I'm subtracting the c divide a, both sides. And then notice what I'll need to do is I'll need to get these to have the same denominator. So I'll multiply this one top and bottom by z divide z, and this one top and bottom by a divide a. And when I do that, they'll both have the denominator az on the right side. So it'll look just like this. And then now that we have a fraction equal to a fraction, we can flip both sides. So that's what I did here. x over g is equal to az divide ay subtract cz. And now all we're going to do, we need to get the x by itself. So we're going to multiply both sides by g. And when we do that, we will have x is equal to azg all over a y that looks like a nine a y subtract c z so not a lot of steps you just have to be careful that you're paying attention with each piece and that's it